So I'll be giving a brief overview about sleep apnea in many of the common neurologic disorders. And this is um, including, but not limited to, um, patients with stroke, dementia, neuromuscular disease. It can also be uh, found in patients who have headaches um, and other uh, neurologic problems. Basically, the overview will discuss very briefly, uh, I think uh, I was given about a 15-minute time limit on it, um, about the different types of neurologic disorders and how to diagnose them with obstructive sleep apnea and what we use with regards to examination um, and how do we evaluate that? Um, really taking home the importance of patients who have a stroke, making sure that they are evaluated for or screened for obstructive uh, sleep apnea, um, and just discussing the cardiovascular risk factors associated with obstructive sleep apnea and stroke and hypertension. And um, I think that's the biggest point for the first part of the talk. And I'll provide a case and we'll go through that case as well. We'll also look at uh, sleep apnea in patients with dementia and understanding that it is important to evaluate people with obstructive sleep apnea among patients who have dementia. And there have been some studies to show that treatment of this obstructive sleep apnea will help their dementia as well. And then I did the same thing for neuromuscular disorders, particularly looking at my um, tonic dystrophy um, and then just making sure that people are aware of Neuromus patients who have neuromuscular disorders can also have um, obstructive sleep apnea. So making sure that they have the proper screening process. Um, and that screening process, it will include um, a stop bang. And I go through that uh, screening tool and modality and making sure that people understand that there are other treatment options as well, um, including but not limited to the CPAP machine. CPAP machine treats all types of obstructive sleep apnea, mild, moderate, and severe but there are other uh, treatment modalities depending on the severity of their obstructive sleep apnea. So if they're in the mild range, then you can do an oral appliance. Um, you can sometimes compare that with or combine it with a CPAP machine in moderate to severe. Uh, and weight loss, I think also is another take home point to make sure that people understand that. I tell my patients short term treatment will be CPAP machine depending on their um, uh, AHI or their severity of their obstructive sleep apnea, but long-term is always weight can, can be uh, weight loss. The exception definitely would be someone with that, like a neuromuscular disorder or something of that nature. But, um, in many of the patients, weight loss is one, um, treatment modality that I believe a lot of clinicians may forget. <laughs> and, uh, I wanted to make sure that we take that home as well.